Hundred sparklers a year or something, set them off. And we blew his face and then we blinded him and blew all the sparks off his hands. That was actually. Hi, how's everybody? Hi, Jeffrey. 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 Hi, J
Um, another is concealed carry for city employees. Um, we can no longer prohibit that. It is currently in our current personnel policy. We do prohibit um, employees from carrying concealed carry um, if they have. Anyway, we can't um, we can't prohibit that anymore. The reason I didn't bring that change is because that'll just be incorporated into our new personnel policy. Um, the open carry obviously is prohibited, and there will be um, a lot of language about, you know, if, if they do carry, obviously it's not in the course of their employment. If they get hurt, or somebody else gets hurt, it's it's not a city workers' comp issue. It's a whole list of um, things that the league had suggested that we implement with that. Yes. Is that just for municipalities or is that across the board? The it's my understanding know. that's all government employees, is my understanding. But not uh, private businesses. Right. No, just right. Right. It's still and um, as far as in buildings, um, as you know, our building, we went through this, we don't have the, quote, adequate security measures that are required, so we cannot prohibit that here. Adequate security now requires an armed personnel um, at all times. Um, we don't have that. Um, there's some talk and from the league that we could do that for this room for specific purposes. But again, we'd have to have metal detectors, armed security, all that. Um, so that's just a little bit on that. That will probably change every year, right? But that's just a, something that we're probably going to always have to deal with is that, that law that will change. Um, the last thing is not a, not a huge issue for us is political signs. Um, we, uh, cities, cannot prohibit um, political signs um, unless they impede traffic and such. Chris has worked up some language for that. Uh, we already have that in our current, well, the zoning regulations that you're going to um, adopt tonight. There's some language in there that will have to be tweaked just a little bit to co coincide with the new state law. But what we had before was real close. Um, so nothing is really going to change there. So we still, so we still limiting the size of this, the political signs? He's got some language in there on the size um, just for site reasons. Otherwise, and he's got a, a size for residential and then other, um, but we cannot limit it just because it has to be for a safety issue, for safety issues. So um, we'll be bringing that to you. So somebody could put a sign up for, like, just out of 2020 election, they could put a sign up today and we could no, restrict that. There's a time limit. There is still a time limit. Though. Yeah, previously we had 60, the state. Um, law is 45, so he's written it to coincide with the state law, which is 45 before and two after. So there are, there are people who already have signs up, so are they technically in violation? Well, we have a primary, which I think we're 45 days. They're within that. Well, I'm talking there's presidential signs already up. I'm just yeah. Yeah. technically yeah. they would be in violation. Though. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, that's all I have. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jay, do you have anything for the council? Of the yes, <laughs> yes. Nothing about presidential signs, though. <laughs> the uh, I want to give you a brief report on what Austin Peters is doing on the recruitment of the <coughs> city administrator. The uh, they've placed announcements in the Kansas League of Municipalities and Association of Counties and also with the League of Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, and Oklahoma uh, municipalities. They've also uh, posted uh, ads uh, or notices with the Kansas Association of City and County Management, as well as with uh, the graduate and master programs at uh, KU, Kansas State U, and uh, Wichita State. So, and uh, so far, they have received uh, seven resumes, but this was of last Tuesday, a week ago, and uh, the deadline is going to be the 15th of July. So you are beginning to get some resumes. Uh, Austin Peters would like to deliver the candidate screening report to you on uh, July 22nd. And, uh, uh, Marla Flint is asking for a special council meeting on the 26th of July to uh, confer on those screening reports and share with you what's been received, how they how they match up with the uh, 
performance of the uh, advertisements and to identify finalists that you might want to interview. And then on August, the week of August 8th, uh, uh, we'd like to set up uh, interviews for candidates. So that's, that's that. Okay. Well, it's moving on. It is. Thank you. Have we heard anything else back from any of the other? We had the water meeting. Has anything been heard back from any of the districts? No. Districts 2 and 3 have not responded. They do have uh, another week or so to do that. So uh, we have heard nothing at this point. Though. Well, thank you. Okay. The next item for uh, public hearing with uh, uh, Larry Kirks with uh, NCK Tech and Dale Gingler wants to address the council about their truck routes or CDL truck routes. There's been a few issues. And they want to kind of let us know why they're going certain routes and who dictates where they go. Good evening. My name's Eric Burks. I think I know most of you here, but uh, I'd introduce you. I'm Dale Gingler, our CDL instructor. And so uh, we've had a couple of concerns expressed to us uh, about our truck routes that have been, have been changed since the construction started on Highway 14. Uh, typically we've went down that route and not had to go on some of the places that we currently are. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but uh, we don't just crawl in the truck and say, hey, why don't you turn left up here or whatever. It's a prescribed route by the state of Kansas. The Department of Motor Vehicles came out. We proposed a route. They made alterations to that route and said this is the route that you're going to do and that's also what they approved for the examination so when you have students that are actually examining that's the route that they're expected there has to be so many right hand turns and left hand turns and dale knows a lot more about them. lane changes and railroad tracks and all those things <coughs> different aspects of driving and so um you know we had tried to do due diligence to make sure that uh, we had a route that was going to work uh, one of the things that they initially wanted us to do was to go on east 8th street and pull trucks up onto that highway. Well, that's been a dangerous intersection historically. And uh, a lot of people also don't know this, but you can't change gears when you're going through an intersection uh, or else you'll fail the examination. And so to have trucks pulling uphill in first gear out on the 55 mile an hour traffic is probably not in anyone's best interest. So that was when they decided to divert it onto North Hersey, which is not a designated truck route but it is a safer route, and so that's uh, that's why that decision was made. But anyway, um, there's been some complaints that we filled in. A uh, police officer, uh, Chief Elam, has been in. We've had a couple other officers that have talked to us, and once we've explained it to them, they're like, oh, well, that makes sense, um, but maybe we need to make the public aware of what's going on. So this really isn't something that we need action from the council or anything like that. It's just an awareness we want you to understand. I guess it's part of the price we pay for progress. We're all going to enjoy 14 being much better, hopefully. Um, but in the meantime, we've got to find some way, and this is what the state has dictated as our route. And so, just wanted to explain that to you. Dale, did you have anything else to add? No. And Dale's here in case you ask me a question, Lloyd, that I can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, when 14 opens, are you going to go back to the old route? or We will. Yeah, the sooner the better. Dale, actually, I think the word he uses was hate. I hate this current route. Uh, <laughs> one, of those, one of those complaints was mine, because it goes right by my, in front of my house. Yeah, I, I, my father-in-law lives right next door to you, so I tried to choose that route so it didn't annoy him. I didn't realize it was going to be That was the I guess that worked thing. out with him. I'm good. No, <laughs> actually, we tried to say that it should go down western, and they, they said no, they wanted Highland. So that was a, one of the alterations to the route that the state DMV uh, had made for us. So uh, we're kind of at their mercy a little bit on this uh, in order for our, in order for the people that pass the test to have a valid license, it has to be an approved uh, examination route. Are there hours limitations on when you're allowed to drive the route or is it in 20 for any time you want basically? Uh, I don't know that there are limitations. I couldn't really speak to that, but I know that we're pretty much doing during business hours because that's when when we have. Yeah, well, that's when that's when we're we're training only from we start training at, at 8 a.m. and we're done. Usually, we try to have our students gone by around four. I mean, if we're by there past four o'clock, it's a rarity. I mean, so uh, how many times do you go on that route during the day? 
Say. It depends on the on the day, uh, on the heaviest. Some days we don't go at all. Uh, tomorrow we'll go once on Wednesdays. Uh, it's just kind of how the, the, our curriculum set up. With uh, Thursdays we probably won't be, we'll probably be by at all on Thursdays. Friday we won't be a by because uh, we don't train typically on Friday. Uh, so it's not a case that you're going down the streets ten times. Not normally. There's there's days like a Tuesdays is our heavy drive days because uh, Wednesdays is test day. So Tuesdays are our heaviest day, and we'll probably we could probably push seven or eight times on a Tuesday. Uh, but that's going to be our maximum day. Uh, I'd say we go. I know we'll do it once tomorrow. Uh, more likely one Thursday, and guaranteed we'll Friday because we don't have any students. And then start Monday, we'll do it maybe five or six times, maybe on Monday, and then Tuesdays, probably seven or eight times, and then, then we'll take her back off again. Seven times per truck or seven times? Well, we're only running one truck right now. Uh, you have been running two. At, at times, at times. Uh, we're uh, actually just uh, hired a new instructor uh, to replace Kirby Chambers retiring, and uh, so I brought our student level numbers back just to get the new instructor up to speed. So. Uh, right now, he's not up to speed to be able to drive the truck or ride with the, the students. So it's pretty much just me, and there's only one of me. So I mean, there has to be an instructor with a student at all times. So um, we really try to, you know, we don't, we're not allowed to speed. We 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 slow down through these areas uh, just to make sure that we're as safe as we possibly can be. And as as areas already indicated, I absolutely hate this route. I, I despise it, um, but I, I don't have a choice in the matter. They, they came up, like you said, we gave, they, we gave them a recommendation and this, this is the route they came back with. Um, so I, I can see them out there on these yeah, days. Yeah, that, 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 that would be a dangerous situation. Off the clutch, truck dies, and it goes backwards and it's from the fender. Yeah, and they get her yeah, That's yeah. tough road. Yeah, yeah, it's tough for a right, you know, driving service experience. Yeah. So we're, we're just asking that please be patient with us. Um, you know, I know we, we don't like being where we're at. But, um, but we will, as soon as 14 highways reopen, we will go back to the old route. Uh, as soon as we can, believe me, the earlier the better. So I guess is there any other questions for, for either of us or, or concerns? Katie, is there anything we would need to do to inform them? Uh, you, you know, we could certainly you know put something in the paper to that effect, or um, NC Tech, NCK Tech could do that. Um, but I'm sure with this, our local press will probably get it out. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were kind of hoping for. Yeah. I think you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Sounds good. Too. Did this did this take you guys by surprise, Eric? Or I mean, did you guys have, kind of have to scramble to get another route, or? No, we knew it was coming. Yeah. We knew it was coming, so yeah, we I'm have the state DMV. I'm sorry. No, no let's go ahead. Uh, I talked to Mr. Porter over at uh, Schwab Eaton several times, was uh, getting updates from him of when, uh, when they were actually going to close 14, because as we all know, there was a couple of delays there to get that project started. And uh, so as soon as he was able to let me know when, you know, pretty much when that project started is when we had to reroute. Uh, because we have to list our route with, the, the, like say, the state of Kansas picked that route and it's listed on their their testing website. So that's, we had to inform the state when we had, when we switched also. So. And I guess if we were to apologize for anything, really it would be just that we didn't have this conversation earlier with you. So uh, we'll learn from that and make sure that uh, we're more proactive that way next time. Like I said, it was really out of our control for the most part. Those trainees are doing some good training because that's the best trying to navigate through all that stuff that's parked along the highway. Uh, <laughs> I agree. And, and like I say, I, I apologize to anybody that, 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 that were upsetting. Uh, that was not our intention at all. Uh, My complaint was I just didn't know. I didn't even talk to them. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, and, uh, officers that came to San Jose State, they were a little bit. You know they're fielding complaints, and and so after we kind of informed them what our rules are, 
you know, then it, then it kind of makes sense. So, So I think guys are performing a very valuable service to North Central Kansas by, yeah. by offering that program. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm glad we, you know, communication is great and we want to help you guys continue to be successful. So mm -hmm. thank you for your comment. <laughs> and it is an unloaded truck. If you have any questions about that, yes, the, the semi weighs more, but uh, I told Tom when I called him the other day, I think my SUV with all my kids in it weighs more than that semi. <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, we appreciate your understanding, and if you can help field any, you uh, field any complaints, if you can help spread the word, we'd appreciate it. And certainly, they can come visit with me, so I'd be fine with that. So, again, thank you both of you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you, gentlemen. Give you a call. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> I got a <laughs> Next item <laughs> on the agenda this evening is the consent agenda. And if you'll see, yet there's a handout with the updated uh, minutes, and it uh, had a, a, the, the correction in there was a motion was made by Council Miller to adopt the new zoning reg and district map for the city of Boyd, adopting the zoning district within a two-mile territorial uh, zoning jurisdiction as written. The motion failed for a lack of second. That Wait, is the change. Somebody with a second that that would <laughs> 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 But well, we can never rewrite it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that, that's what the change in the minutes is. We approve the consent agenda in its entirety. Second. Then moved by Councilman Luttrell that we approve the one be next consent agenda in its entirety, and it was seconded by Councilman Ponto. Oh, is uh, there any further discussion? Okay. No further discussion. Mandy, would you take a roll call vote on that, please? Ponto? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Luttrell? Yes. Miller? Yes. Audie? Yes. Graybond? Yes. Gingler? Yes. Thank you. The next item on our agenda this evening is ordinances and ordinance 21. 87 insurance proceeds uh, and there's no direct cost to this. Katie, do you want to comment on this? Stuff? Yeah, this is um, where this came from. We've always had this, or I shouldn't say always, but for quite some time we've had the insurance proceed um, in our city code where if there's a fire, damage by fire, things like that, then um, a lien is created. The legislator made this change primarily because of the seismic activity that's happening mostly south of us. Um, they wanted to expand that, um, so now it's any damage to the home, um, not just fire, wind, or explosion. So that was kind of the reasoning behind this legislation. All the language is the same except for 7601, um, I think. Yes, everything else is the same as what was in our prior city code. So. Any questions? So moved. It's been moved by Councilman Draymond and we accept ordinance 2187 and the insurance proceeds and it was seconded by Councilman Miller. Is there any further discussion? No further discussion. Uh, Mandy, would you please take a, another roll call vote? Luttrell? Yes. Ponto? Yes. Gingler? Yes. Grayboy? Yes. Audi? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Miller? Yes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda this evening is Ordinance 2188, Zoning Regulations and Zoning Map. One can comment on this. Those regulations, um, Hannah Keelan needs to go in and remove the map that has the two mile, and then they need to remove the agricultural zoning district that we had outside. So that is currently in the works. So this ordinance will be attached to those new zoning regulations. So I don't have them to show you, but I can tell you that the only change is we're excluding that two mile and we're keeping all the regulations for within the city and the, and the map that you've seen previously for within the city. So hopefully they'll have that done here pretty soon. Any other questions? Comments? So moved. Is there a member of the council? Very bold. 
approve ordinance 2188, adopting new zoning regulations and zoning map within the city limits of the road, and excluding zoning regulations in the two mile extraterritory jurisdiction. That's second. Second. Second by Councilman McMillan. Any further discussion? Manny, would you please take another roll call vote? Porto. Porto. Yes. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Gingler? Yes. Graybon? Yes. Luttrell? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Audie? Yes. Miller? Yes. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda this evening is the housing bid for the housing rehabilitation, demolition, CDBG. We have a recommendation to approve the demolition bids from Jensen Ag Service in the amount of ten thousand dollars for two demolition units. Heather, do you want to make a comment? Uh, only if there's any questions. We we kind of ran short on time. We had asked for an extension of six months, and we were only granted four months. Um, and so we're a little concerned about the time. If if we need to, we'll go back and ask for another two months from the state. And that's all because it happened right in the middle of the storm and we had a hard time getting contractors at the beginning. Um, demo bids have come in really good. We've had a lot of bids, so. Any other questions for Heather? The fact that this company is in town is the only reason that they're getting the bid? Uh, because just, they were one of the higher. Right. Um, the timeliness of some of the other ones were in question. When we when we check some references, so this will be a we know these guys will be pretty quick. Thank you. Uh huh. Okay. So, motion, motion to amend the housing bid for rehabilitation demolition CDBG uh, for approval by Councilman Miller. Uh, who seconded that? Second by Councilman McMillan. Any further discussion? No further discussion. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next time on our agenda this evening is the health insurance renewal with uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Any questions for staff? I have a question. Um, so we're having to dip into the reserves to pay the new increase in premium, how, how healthy is our reserve going to be after we, we approve them? Are, are, we, are we going to be able to do this again next year? Or um, just some, yeah. Um, if it stays the same, um, probably, but it doesn't hurt that we got that money back the last couple of years. And basically, it's just they were paying out more claims than what we paid in premiums. Plus we got that $500,000 back over the course of two years. And, you know, in all fairness and stuff, I mean, it's kind of what it's for, I suppose. Yeah, well, I, and so, I, I agree, I'm just wondering how long we, we can do this. If we, uh, well, the good news is, is since we changed the renewal dates, we can kind of see it coming better. Like, since I know now in June, instead of guessing, of how much it's going to be, we could probably do it. Um, that's the way it's set up for next year anyways. But if it keeps going up. No, it's not sustainable after that. So. Make a motion. Motion been made by Council Minotti that we approve the fully funded health insurance in the amount of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Do I have a second? I'll second. Yeah. Second by Councilman Ponto. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed same. Motion carries. Uh, the next one is the appointment of Charlie Wright as second assistant fire chief. Uh, recommended by uh, Chief Miller. So it's been moved by Councilman Gingler that we uh, approve the uh, appointment of Charlie Wright as second assistant fire chief. So that's second. Second by Councilman Trebon. Any discussion? No discussion. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed same. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is adjournment. So moved. 
been moved by Councilman Ponto that we adjourn. Do we have a second? Been second by Councilman McMillan. Any discussion? Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. We'll now go into the adjourned the work section. Katie, do you have anything at this time? No, nope, nothing else. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jay? No, sir. Okay. If nothing else, then we uh, stand adjourned. Yeah. Hey, maybe we still got time to get up. Yeah. 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 Just start. Don't forget. We're bringing the fireworks. I'm going. Don't forget the doctor opened the stage. I won't tell him we're done at 7 30 if you don't. It's my wife you're going to be doing. I was just talking to you.